I'm a shopaholic. I'll admit it's not the best trait to have, but there are worse addictions. Plus, I don't spend money I don't have, so it doesn't actually harm me in any way. That being the case, I order a lot of stuff online. So when I received the email saying I had a new package, I didn't question it. Black Friday sales had been happening all throughout the week, and I had gone on a bit of a shopping spree. So the email seemed normal. I thought it was the confirmation for a jacket I had ordered. It was so average at first glance you wouldn't even think twice, so I didn't. That was until I received the actual shipping confirmation for the jacket the next day. That puzzled me, so I decided to check the original email a little better and find out exactly what was arriving. The email was from some obscure delivery company I'd never heard of, but that wasn't too strange for small local deliveries. From Wellston Deliveries Subject Order number 0383 Delivery Confirmation Hi Aiden Kim, your package is out for delivery and will arrive in 3-4 to four business days. You will meet the delivery person at your front door to complete the order. Track your package here, at the provided link. If you have any complications, we are happy to help at our 24-7 customer support line. Call us here, and to have the provided phone number. It didn't immediately say what I had ordered, so I opted to check the tracking page to see the shipping history, thinking it could provide me with some more detail. I wonder if that was the point of no return or if my fate was already sealed the moment I received the email. The package had a history, that was for sure. The thing had seemingly been bounced around the country for the last seven years, making hundreds of stops at random locations. Every point of the journey seemed to be a random house, not a shipping center like I would have thought normal. 7 Veronis Court, 67 9th Street West, 112 Honeysuckle Road. 3162 Vincent Circle. It had stopped off at hundreds of houses. The most recent was in my city, so I decided to look it up. I recognized the general area, but the address didn't ring a bell. I just wanted to see why it would take five to seven business days for an in-city delivery. When I looked up the address, I was proven right. The last stop had only been about an hour's drive away from my house. It was a normal looking townhouse, that area was pretty popular student housing for the local university, and I'd driven through the area multiple times, but that wasn't what jumped out at me. There were a couple of local articles detailing a recent tragedy at the exact address. A local undergrad named Sam Kelsey had been found dead in his home. Found was a generous term, apparently the state of the body was unidentifiable, and they assumed he was the victim due to him living there alone. I was shocked and was really starting to get freaked out at this point, so I went back to the website. I had seen a courier note at all the addresses, but had not read through them due to there being so many. That was when I realized this was not just a sick prank, but something about the package was not normal. Order number 0382 courier note. Sam Kelsey was a loser. He knew everyone called him that, including his parents. If you were to ask him one thing that he had accomplished, he would probably shrug. When he heard the knock at his door, he didn't question the shipment he thought was food. When he let it into his house after not seeing a delivery person, he was a loser still. He didn't make it to the living room before his fingers and legs popped off. He tried to scream, but it was useless as his tongue lay detached in his mouth. Even though the blood flowed out of him as every part of his body popped off, Sam couldn't die. He felt himself strewn across the carpet until his brain finally rolled out of his skull. I threw up in the bathroom before resuming with my disgusting fascination. All of the notes were the same, some more detailed but all equally gruesome and meaty. Order number 0380 at 67-9th Street West to a Michelle Sierra Gavin went into detail about how she could feel the flesh sliding off her bones as she reached out for help alone in her house. Order number 0379 at 3162 Vincent Circle to Diego Silva went into great detail about what he was thinking when all of his skin shrunk around him, squeezing the insides out like an awful tube of toothpaste. The oldest courier note that I could verify was order number 0017 to a Linda Carmichael at 23 Hunter Road. 
The note made me once again rush to the bathroom to deposit the bile that was in my stomach. The thoughts as she felt her organs push her way out of her mouth, slithering to escape onto her living room floor. After the organs, everything else on the inside followed suit. The note went into great detail about how the process took an excruciating hour and a half. It was the obituary listing her as dead seven years ago, saying she was a wonderful mother and wife that made me sick. I want to call the police, but I'm scared that they'll arrest me. Who would believe that a random shipping company has been professionally killing people in ways that don't make sense all while not leaving any evidence? It wouldn't even matter anyway. I'd still die. The only difference would be that I'm remembered for something I didn't do. I did try to cancel the order, reroute the package, but the website didn't even provide options for that. I even tried staying at a hotel, planning on just not being home when the package arrived. When I checked my phone to see where the package was, though, my hopes sunk. The shipping address had changed to the hotel room I was currently staying in. I wondered if it changed when I checked my phone or if it had always been tracking me, just as much as I'd been tracking it. There was the customer support phone number on the shipping order confirmation email, so I tried my luck at that hoping I could beg whoever was on the other side of the line to spare my life. The robotic voice that answered after a couple of rings only repeated the same message on a loop into my ear. This line is dead. Sorry for your loss. I've been thinking about my fate as the time approaches. I've been thinking about how we're just meat. I know it might seem obvious to say. Aiden, of course, we're not meat. But to be consciously aware of this fact is plaguing me. Every other one of the people I read about in those notes, Sam, Michelle, Diego, Linda, every single one of them had been identified by the viscera that splattered their houses. They were not people in the end. They were meat they scraped off the walls. When my time comes, I will be another sickening story of meat that the person after me reads when discovering their impending fate. I know it will be awful. There was never anyone before me who passed nicely. I am me, but I am and I will be meat. Although, hopefully this story is enough to make me a little more beyond meat. Maybe it will help someone understand what is going on or how to escape, but I doubt it. I won't be opening my door when I hear a knock, but that did not work for anyone else before me. In the quiet before the storm, Aiden Kim faces an unseen terror a package tracking him as surely as he attempted to track it. His narrative unfolds a chilling blend of modern-day convenience and ancient ineffable dread, where not even the sanctity of home can ward off the specter of death delivered in cardboard. Aiden's ordeal, marked by the inexorable countdown of a delivery tracker, forces us to confront the often overlooked darkness lurking within the mundane. It is a reminder that, in an age where every desire can be fulfilled with a click, there might be orders that, once placed, cannot be canceled, leading us inexorably to our ends. This story, a digital age parable, compels us to ponder the nature of our existence in a world increasingly mediated by screens and virtual interactions. Aiden's confrontation with his mortality, his reduction to mere meat by forces beyond comprehension, serves as a stark memento mori for the digital era. It whispers of ancient fears awakening in our interconnected lives, where anonymity and presence blend until we're left questioning the very fabric of our reality. So, as we navigate our lives, clicking and ordering, let's remember the tale of Aiden Kim, lest we too find ourselves tracking something sinister, something that tracks us back. This has been Josh Bloodbath, signing off from the Savage Creep Show. Sleep well, or perhaps don't sleep at all, for the package you didn't order might just be for you. <laughs>